Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we begin with the Mars ISRU unit which is going to approach Mars soon. Of course I'll be handling the Mars transfer vehicle's ion engine burns off to the side and I'm sort of hoping that the ion engine, spur ion engine burns will lengthen the amount of time it takes for it to actually reach Mars, giving the ion engines even more time to actually do the burn. That would be helpful, we'll see. But uh, for now, we just need to do a minor correction to bring this periapsis down. I'm going to go with 50 kilometers again. The mass of this is not too much different from the mass of the other missions. And the, of course, the heat shield diameter should be the same. We'll check on that with FAR to make sure it's being read properly. And uh, of course, if it fails to be properly read, I'm not entirely sure we can fix that. Uh, the only way I can think of doing so would be to sort of go away from the vehicle and come back. Uh, one comment was that I should add the RO configurations for Kerbalism as well. I have not done that yet. Um, I will do that. But I decided not to change anything just yet as we are bringing these missions in. The power situation shouldn't be critical at this point. Uh, of course, it was more important during the long time warps from Earth to Mars. Taking a look at our approach, we seem to be hoping that there's going to be some something to drill in equatorial location. Um, let me come out of physical time warp. And, you know, I still have a chance to correct include. Oh, this is not what I want. I keep doing Mars uh, Transfer Window Planner instead of ScanSat. Um, well, uh, there seems to be ore, I mean, small concentrations, 2%-ish at equatorial locations. So I guess we can try for those. Yeah, it seems pretty well covered with ore, to be honest. So, all right. We'll keep it like this and not change the inclination at this point. It uh, Probably the poles only seem to be more full of ore because it's when it goes in its orbit, it just hasn't covered most of the equatorial locations yet. Okay, well at least ScanSat is working this time. Okay, I'll wait until we get closer before separating this so it doesn't affect our periapsis so much. I don't know why I put an extra decoupler here when the stage itself has a decoupler, but we'll just stage the decoupler there. Okay, uh, I need to turn back to the Mars transfer vehicle and I'll be back with this closer to, well, uh, probably we'll have to take a look at that Mars Scanner 2 first because this is going to be in in a day. Okay, here we are with Mars Scanner 2 and this one we want to put into orbit around Phobos. It's got the fuel, I think, and more importantly, it's already got a plot. It's already got an encounter if we do this burn correctly. Uh, communication is good and we're communicating through both this Pioneer Station Module and SAT Pack, which has not actually arrived yet, but is apparently close enough. Oh, I guess the SAT Pack satellites, even though they're not deployed, are working. Now that it's close enough, we can see it communicating through the SAT Pack. All right. Because um, it shows two different uh, comm things on the SAT Pack, and that must be one of the other satellites. Anyway, it's complicated. Seems like we're basically at the right altitude that we were supposed to be at. Okay, Phobos encounter there. If we do this burn, seems like a good deal. So um, we'll have this alarm. We really want something well ahead of time. All right, so this is on its way. Maybe we'll see it capture into, Phob uh, into Phobos orbit during this episode. Okay, Mars ISRU unit capture time. We've got good communication and well, uh, the Pioneer Station module is pretty close by. We should be going much faster than it, so we might be right over it. Oh, under it, actually, by the time we get there. Seems good. Though the Mars Station, the Pioneer Station module needs to also have communication. Can't be on the opposite side of Mars from Earth. We've got plenty of electric charge because we needed it for the drill and all. Probably why we never heard a peep out of this about losing electric charge. 
It had the huge solar panels and it had a lot of battery. But we do need to capture into orbit, not direct into landing. So that's a special situation. This was actually configured to land on Phobos or Deimos, wasn't it? Because we don't have parachutes. Ah, yeah. That makes sense. We're going to need to scan Phobos and Deimos. We, the scan of Mars is irrelevant to this, really. I mean, could we bring it down to Mars? Maybe. Because we didn't pay any attention to it, it's still got its hydrogen and oxygen, though. That's good. All right. Um, separation. All right. So, moment of truth. Uh, so, 16 without the inflatable heat shield. Forty okay, seventy seventy two. All right, all right. Okay, it's good. I don't know how all that inflatable heat shield magic reworks exactly, but we're glad that it does. We don't need this anymore. Okay, we're actually at fifty point nine. Well, I guess we'll take it. Uh, after all, we we're sort of aiming for Phobos orbit, so. Being a little bit high is not a bad thing necessarily. And 7,027 on the entry speed. Oh, it's F surface? That's surface, okay, good. Got all the data on my spreadsheet. There is a spreadsheet based on surface data. Mm, we've lost communication. We slowed down more than I would like. We've captured. Oh, I think we're going to be coming straight down, actually. Can we deflate this thing? Jettisoning is probably dangerous. Everything's probably dangerous. We're going to land. Okay, so that was a bad move on my part. Hmm, interesting. Oh, you know, I calculated. I added in the mass of the heat, uh, the spent stage. This is only like 10 tons. Well, see, it is sensitive. We have communication at least. Okay, well, is this an area of Mars that... I keep doing that. An area of Mars that actually has some... something to drill? Uh, well... Not as such. I mean, at least we haven't seen any of our scanner. Ooh. Oh, for... Uh, okay, that was a bad move. You know, I could... <laughs> I could get it to orbit instead. I tried to jettison the heat shield because obviously we can't come down oriented like that. And we won't have parachutes to reorient us. Oh, we've lost communication again. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, Pioneer Station module went away too much. Well, this one was a bust. Bad estimate on the periapsis was basically the fundamental problem here. And that was because I added in the mass of the spent Sagita upper stage. Oh, now it blows away, right when we, like, need it. We could have totally used it. <laughs> to soften the blow on descent, but no, uh, I, I, I've already tried throttling up, I can't. Poor little blue moon. But then, it's in unfamiliar territory. It was not meant for this place. Well, that's our first outright demise, and that was totally my fault. Alright, a little bit more of the Mars transfer vehicle for me, but uh, next, I'll be with the Mars Scanner 2 when I come back. Okay, so with Mars Scanner 2, we're going to do the capture burn, and the, the communication situation is good. We've got a line back here. Um, eventually, we'll have a horizon problem around here-ish, but uh, we should be okay through the burn. The burn will take less than five minutes. 
so we can do it with reasonable accuracy which is super necessary to meet up with Phobos of course I guess I might as well start the scanner assuming the power is okay I wonder what I've got as the Mechjeb uh, attitude adjustment 32 you know what maybe 20 will be fine and ignition got a message that we lost power on the sap pack hopefully it'll get recharged we do have another ISRU unit technically the Fobo Superlander does have ISRU capability we'll see about that I guess the the ISR unit that we crashed into Mars was supposed to actually land on Mars. Uh, the way it was coming in, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, chance to bring it down safely. We would have to jettison the heat shield. It'd have to capture an orbit, jettison the heat shield, and then come down, which it could have done if I hadn't aimed too low. Um, let me see what's going on with Phobos right now. Ah, we fell short, uh, I thought so, because I saw the closest approach distance. We ended up being a little bit late on the burn. Okay, I'll make a mid-course correction. Actually, maybe we can correct here. That should be close enough. I don't know what altitude we could scan Phobos at. Oh, we've lost communication temporarily. Well, we might have to do this correction another time. Okay, we've completed our correction. I'm going to do another correction so that we're in a polar orbit instead of coming equatorial. And we'll do that closer to it. And then it'll take about 541 meters per second to complete our orbit. So it's looking good for this little scanner. Okay, I've handled the correction, but we have to be careful approaching Phobos. Our encounter is in 10 minutes and 15 seconds and counting. Our escape is like 2 minutes later. And fortunately, our big engine can handle that burn in that time. But we don't want to accidentally crash into it. Let's uh, take a look. There it is. Okay, we are in Phobos SOI. Just going to go retrograde. I have no idea about... Well, it says subop suboptimal, but I don't know if that means that it can't scan. But there's no way we're going to get in into a high orbit around Phobos, so we'll see. Um, I, keep, <laughs> I keep clicking that one for some reason. Okay, um, Celestial Body Phobos. Let's see. Anyway, Retro. Well, we've, we've scanned a little bit of it, but that was from further out, I think. That was like from outside the SOI even. Maybe, I don't know. We'll try and get the apoapsis as high around Phobos as possible. Well, uh, Mechjeb thinks that it's still in orbit at this, but the game does not, so we have to obey the game. Oh, that's complicated. That is some fancy stuff right there. We exit, we come back around a few times. If we really wanted to stay high, this would be a way to do it, to be honest multiple encounters with Phobos look at that that's that's fancy enough that I almost want to keep it but no let's let's be reasonable here there's a lot of that going on right now okay that's as good as we can get with the game admitting that it's an orbit around Phobos so, do we end up scanning stuff? God, well, it's a 12-hour orbit. I'm not going to wait that long. We've got other things to do. Well, it's not scanning right now, I can tell you that. It's too low. And we'll just have to see later whether we get some data out of this or not. Okay. So, it's got the persistent rotation bit oh stop that all right well 
If it doesn't work out, we might have to try those fancy multiple paths that sort of orbit uh, around Mars that repeatedly encounters Phobos. But next up, the Phobos Superlander. Okay, here we are with the Phobos Superlander ahead of its correction burn. Uh, I was going to start the RCS here, but it seems to be bringing us away from Mars instead of towards it. So I think we actually have to go in the opposite direction and that this correction is wrong or is it because of the inclination? Anyway, I'll figure that out and replot this. It's just a minor issue, but we are recharging. It was out of electric charge, but that was just a minor thing. And uh, yeah, I think it's mostly an inclination correction to get this in line with Phobos. That's why it's like this. So. But we can't use the main engine to do it quickly, unfortunately, because it'll be that has too much thrust. So anyway, I'll handle this and we will replot and be ready for its arrival. Okay, we're bringing in the Phobos Superlander here and 50 kilometers. I'm hoping that that's going to be all right. Uh, so we're going to decouple that, that ignition, RCS on both things. I'm actually going to delay using the RCS on the top. We don't really need that unless it needs to dock. So, yep. All right. And separation. Okay. That's uh, the warning was for the spent stage. We did run out of power, but we're recharging because big solar panels. Now, uh, we need to retract these antennae, but it's got internal as well. But that's not very long range. It's about 200,000 kilometers. Far says it's 72 meters squared, so that's correct. And surface negative. We'll keep the solar panels out for now. Let me try retracting one antenna. It seems like sat pack is helping now. It's been out of power so often. Heck, I think it's still out of power, isn't it? No, it's uh, partial power. So, well, not partial power. It's got 1% is what I mean. So we're at 14.8 tons. That's almost exactly the same as an earlier mission that we brought in but the earlier mission was coming in pretty fast I'd rather not lose this but I also don't want it getting flung out into interplanetary space either so it's a delicate balance Okay, 51 kilometers we'll say we're going to go for. Well, I guess I have to retract the solar panels. Shouldn't have too big a draw. Oh, one per second. Doesn't give us a huge amount of time. Oh, okay. Uh, it seems to be okay with the signal just on the internal thing. Like the sat pack must be very powerful. Which it ought to be, darn it. Uh, how long are we going to have a line back? Not long. Once we pass over that horizon, we're not going to have a connection to the sat pack anymore. Okay, 7,022 entering the atmosphere. Spent stage exploding. Or fling by. Is that the engine? We've lost communication. Okay, about 5,600 at periapsis. This should be okay. Assuming we get communications back. We have captured. Ended up in a fairly loose orbit. How does that look compared to Phobos? It's, uh, it's beyond Deimos. And inclination is pretty bad, actually. We might have to have this pass through the atmosphere another time. 
Okie dokie. Well, uh, we need to see if we can reacquire. We've got less than half an hour to do that. Too bad uh, this Pioneer module is not a relay set. That Pioneer station module is. Now we got to pick that up. Does it even have a line back? I don't know. Uh, oh, yes it does. Whew. Just on time. Now we could I could have tried that. It seemed like I was able to extend an antenna even if I didn't have communication. So I'm glad I didn't have to do that because that's cheats. But uh, still, that was close. I actually briefly turned back to the Mars transfer vehicle, but of course I need to extend the solar panels and make sure that we're pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Okay, so I got the Phobos Super Lander into a safe orbit around Mars, boosting its periapsis, and we're checking in on the Mars transfer vehicle, which is still doing its ion engine burn, and I've got to turn to the Mars scanner soon. But uh, you can see we need 482 meters per second just to get our orbit back closer to Mars. Right now it's out here and getting closer very slowly. And the pace at which it's doing this burn is not quick to say the least. We're gonna arrive at that periapsis in six days and 20 hours and at that point if we finish this burn we would take 880 meters per second in order to capture. Now if I shut these engines down and we see how much we have with the with the methane engines uh, that shouldn't be counting some I have reserved up here well, the four turns and such so that we can still maneuver. Uh, but I don't know if uh, the number is counting that or not. So I'm going to shut down the ion engines. And what we see is we have 638 meters per second with the methane. So there are a few takeaways I've got from this. First of all, if you recall, actually we aren't using the X1 engines that's what the, these ion units are based on. I'm assuming that there are 10 X1 engines in each of these, so 30 altogether. But I've throttled them down uh, in the configuration file because I wanted the good ISP. I think in the end, I need more thrust and less ISP. <laughs> so uh, the next version, the next Mars transfer vehicle that we'll build, I think I'll have them, I'll, I'll make a version that's full thrust and just accept, I think the ISP for the full thrust will be like 2,400 seconds or something like that. So I'll accept that and see how that works out. Because I think that's, I mean, we just aren't having enough time to do these burns properly. So anyway, that is the, oops, that's the situation there. And uh, probably in order to actually get this into orbit around Mars safely, which is the priority here, We'll dump anything that we don't strictly need right now, and we can refill the food, water, oxygen, or whatever later. We'll keep the nitrogen, and uh, we might end up dumping some of the xenon gas. I mean, the xenon gas, you've got 9,800 meters per second. And I'll contemplate just leaving it in orbit around Mars until the next window, where we'll send some refueling stuff over to it. So it'll act as a Mars station as well. So I'll think about that, but that's the situation here. Okay, I've turned to this Mars scanner, and this one does seem dead, even though I'm sure I left it in the correct position. It is not in the correct position anymore. It is in Mars SOI, but for reasons I can't understand, these solar arrays don't turn anymore. Pretty sure they used to. Um... Technically, I mean, this one, since we've already got one around Mars and another one around Phobos, this one would be aimed for Deimos. Maybe I'll cheat. I mean, it's not the most important thing. I guess I'll, I'll go ahead with the cheats. But, I mean, it's not too consequential anyway. It definitely had persistent rotation and SAS, so it should have been maintaining that orientation, but 
Anyway, I'll let it recharge for a little bit, then handle the maneuver, which is just to get its periapsis safe. I, I'll try and see if I can get some sort of Deimos encounter. We'll see. Okay, I've made a 7 meter per second correction and turn it back towards the sun. And it looks like if we do a 2400 meter per second burn at periapsis, it'll capture. And then we can go up to apoapsis, do a 100 meter per second burn to lift up our orbit to Deimos orbit. And then come back around here to pull the apoapsis down all the way. And the burn to pull apoapsis down to match Deimos' orbit is 479. So we should have enough when you sum it all up with about 500 to spare. So this can get into orbit around Deimos. I'm going to dump this one so that we'll probably have to reply anyway. Besides, I wasn't getting an encounter just yet because of the timing. So we might have to pull it down part ways first. Anyway, so this probe is ready to make orbit around Mars and it's got a good chance to do something useful. So add that alarm and I'll give myself uh, actually about 20 minutes on that. And we'll check up on it in a day and three hours. Okay, so we're approaching Mars now and we're bouncing through the Pioneer Station module. Hopefully that'll come around quickly enough. I don't think we have enough antenna range to go straight back, but it seems like we've got a possible link to the sat pack, which still hasn't made orbit around Mars. Hopefully that's in a good place. I'm gonna start the scanner now, since it seems to like higher orbits anyway, and they'll help with the Mars bit. Okay, so we approach Okay, we have a capture, but we don't want a really long orbit, of course. And shut down, Oop! Oh, shut down, shut down. Oh, we lost communication. No, this is gonna ruin our plans. The burn took too long. Oh no. And this is why we need commsats. They should have arrived first. Gosh darn it. Well, I guess this is uh, karma for reviving it with the electric charge cheat. There's no way I can... Oh wait, it let me do that. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, it. I thought they prevented you from locking the fuel tanks if there's no communication, didn't they? It used to be that you couldn't do that. Good thing I always try everything. <laughs> so, all right, um, we have locked the fuel tanks and I can't delete that maneuver node. Well, let's, as much as I don't want to hang out here with this, let's just get it into communication again so I can set it up properly. Otherwise we might get some nasty surprises when I get back to it. Okay, there's communication. Get rid of that. Okay, so, well, that's a much lower AP. Can we still do this? Let me unlock the fuels again. 888 left. Um, should be. Should be able to. Okay, that's an encounter. Took 20 meters per second there. So that's 126. So summing it all together, it's about 700. So just enough. And we'll set this alarm. So still good. Still good. But weird. Uh, the comm limitations don't seem to be working the way I thought they did. Uh, maybe that's some difficulty settings or something like that that I've got different from what it usually is. But okay, gonna add that maneuver, pop on over and do some ion engine burning, come back with this, and then we will do this correction. Okay, that is the node. We'll have to replot that and that, I'm sure. Um, I am turning it to the sun now, pressing SAS, noting that the I'll deactivate and activate again just in case that the reference is the sun. 
And so, just in case it runs out of power again, we know that it's legit to get the electric charge back. And so eventually, over here, I'll wait a little bit for it to come around. That's probably good enough. Okay, we have our new plot for getting into orbit around Deimos, 36.5 meters per second and 98, so we still have enough. No problems there. And this is charging up. So, well, next up is the Mars transfer vehicle into Mars SOI. And we'll see what we have to do to get into orbit. I'll just uh, focus on making sure we get into orbit. If we have to dump like all the xenon gas, the main thing is to make sure it's not going out into interplanetary space and headed for nowhere. So that's the priority. You know, thinking about it, we could, even if we ended up in interplanetary space, as long as it's close enough to Mars' orbit, we could continue burning with the ion engine to actually slow down with respect to Mars. And thereby, or no, uh, well, I don't know which direction. We, we'd be going too fast. So we'd have to slow down with respect to Mars and then let Mars catch up to us and then have a second encounter. I think that's a possibility, actually. I'm not sure how to plot that at this point, but uh, well, it's, uh, we'll look at that. I'll try my best to do this burn, though, and just get it done the easier way. Okay, well, this isn't good. So far, I've been saying that... Uh, the capture maneuver would only take 890 when we plotted it before, but now it's saying 1,100, or is that because we were just too tight? Maybe we were just too tight in. Let's see, 990? Still not good. And we're not slowing down, we're not adjusting ourselves nearly enough, so, hmm. This is not good in quite a number of ways. Well, I'm going to start dumping stuff right now. Because our SOI change is in 10 hours. Uh, anything that's not useful. Lithium hydroxide. Oh, that's probably not very heavy. Actually, it's a few, uh, it's a substantial amount. More than a ton worth. So I take it back. Definitely gonna dump the water. That's three tons. Don't know how much the food weighs, but it's probably substantial. Okay, and I'm gonna pick one of the, the helium probably isn't much. I'm gonna pick one of the Xenon tanks and dump it too. I think I'll retain 6,000 with the ions for now. Let us uh, shut them down and see how much with the methane, how much delta V we have with the methane. Seven seventy. Still not enough. We've already drained the lander of fuel yes I thought of that uh, well besides we wanted to uh, keep it from boiling off this could have been, could have been avoided with uh, better maneuvering earlier on well I mean we're already at the point where it's gonna be stranded around Mars so guess I might as well dump some more if we can get stranded around Mars Making sure it gets stranded around Mars is sort of a something we're trying for here at this point. Yeah, I don't see how this doesn't end up a bust. We're only one hour and 36 minutes away from the Mars encounter. Our Mars periapsis is still way out. Um, and there's just not going to be enough Delta V to do anything about it. On the bright side, I've learned a few things. <laughs> we've entered Mars SOI. Okay, we've got full electric charge, basically. We have not been having that, mainly because all this stuff has been radial burns, which is just a matter of bad timing, really. 
temporarily shutting off the engines, activating our methane engines, and ignition. Okay, I think in the time well, but then it's going to cost more. Well, okay. I was thinking we could shut down the methane oxygen engines for the time being. But maybe I'll get down to 50 meters per second, maybe 5,000 kilometers. All right, so I'm going to shut these down. We don't have a huge amount of delta V left with them. Okay, we've pretty much brought the periapsis down now. Uh, eventually I'm gonna have to stop by the Mars scanner to handle its maneuver to meet up with Deimos. This uh, maneuver, well such as it is, we don't even know if we can complete it, is in one day and three hours and by that time we have to get through 982 meters per second basically. And the ion engines are working right now, slowly bringing periapsis down and slowing us down, hopefully. and. Uh, Somehow this orientation is getting us full charge, 232 out of 240 basically. So that's the best we can do. And I think I'm going to leave this as a cliffhanger. Can we make orbit around Mars? I don't know, actually, um, right now. Right now, I mean, I'm a, I don't know if it's correctly assessing how much delta V we have with this part of the bar in the methane and oxygen department, but obviously that would not be enough and we would be in trouble. Uh, to address other things you might point out, the helium is not only light but it's also technically for the pressurization of the methane oxygen system so getting rid of it is a bit cheaty and um, could dump more xenon gas but there's a chance that if we do miss Mars that it could help out with re, you know, uh, lining up with Mars again and trying a second time. So, and right now I don't think it's that heavy anymore. So we'll see, compared to the empty structure of the vessel. It's probably doing more help than harm. All right, so with this issue, and with some successful missions, one crashed into Mars in this episode, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.